often when you're working with 3D shapes, you'll be given some 3D shape like this sphere and given some measurements of that shape and you'll be asked to calculate the volume of it using the formula for the volume of a sphere in this case. But sometimes the problem will ask you to work backwards. It'll give you the volume, in this case 1047.4 cubic meters, and ask you what would the radius have to be to get that volume. And so that's what I'd like to show you in this video. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Uh, the first way I found my students have more success with, they understand it more, uh, and they uh, get the right answer more often. Uh, but the other way actually I find a little bit better for uh, getting a very accurate answer, but I'll show you that in a minute. First we start with the formula for the volume of a sphere. The volume is equal to 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed radius to the third power. And let's take the volume that we're given and let's put it into the formula. So the volume is 1047.4 is equal to 4 thirds times pi and the radius I don't know so I have to leave that as an r for now radius to the third power. So the first thing I would do and this is like I said this is how I've found that my students have the most success is let's simplify this right side a little bit. The, here are three terms multiplied together. Four thirds times pi times the radius to the third power. I want to solve for r. Let's multiply these two terms together to make a single term. So I'm still going to have 1047.4 here on the left, but over here let's do four thirds times pi. See what we get. So if I do 4 thirds, or 4 divided by 3, times pi, I'll use the pi key on my calculator instead of using 3.14, but 4 thirds times pi looks like I get 4.18879 and so on. Um, and one thing I'm going to do, and I didn't write this here, but maybe I'll write it now, is I want this to the nearest tenth. I want this to the nearest tenth. But even though I want the final answer to the nearest tenth, I'm not going to start rounding to the nearest tenth now. Because that's one, one uh, weakness of this method. There's some rounding error involved here. So I'm going to round at least to the nearest hundredth. Uh, and then I'll round the final answer to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to say this is 4.19 to the nearest hundredth place. So 4.19 is the 4 thirds times pi, and that is now multiplied times the radius to the third power. So how do I get the radius by itself? Well, the opposite of multiplying that by 4.19 is to divide it by 4.19. And the benefit here is that 4.19 divided by 4.19 is equal to 1, leaving r to the third power all by itself. And if I divide the right side by 4.19, I'm going to divide the left side by 4.19. And when I do, I'm going to get 1047.4 divided by 4.19. And again, I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth place, 249.976. So I'll round that up to 0.98. So that was 249.98 is equal to r to the third power. Here's another part of the uh, volume of a sphere that's a little bit tricky to work with. This 249.98 is equal to r cubed, r to the third power. So if I want to solve for r, I have to do the opposite of cubing it, the opposite of raising it to the third power, which is to take the cube root. Just like the opposite of squaring a number is to take the square root, the opposite of cubing a number is to take the cube root. So if I take the cube root of both sides, I'll get r over here on the right, and I will get the cube root of 249.98 over here. In other words, what times itself times itself is equal to 249.98. Thankfully, uh, the calculator can do that for me. If you have a scientific calculator, it will usually do it just fine. I see right over here this key, the exponent key, right above it, uh, it says x with the root symbol. So to get my calculator to do the cube root, I'm going to hit 3. 
I'm going to hit the second key and then the exponent key, which brings up, I don't know if you can see it well, but there's a little x next to the root symbol, which means since I entered that 3, it's going to do the cube root of 249.98 equals, and I'm going to round this to also to the nearest hundredth place, and it looks like it's 2 point, sorry, 6.299, so I'll round that up to 6.30. And actually, this is my final answer, so I can round that to the nearest tenth. So that's going to be 6.3. And since the volume is in cubic meters, this radius must be in meters. So that's what my radius would have to be in order to get that volume. Now I'm going to show you a different way. This method, I think, is better. It reduces this extra rounding step. Uh, but when I teach this to my students, they do get confused with this method sometimes, uh, but I'll show it to you anyway. Uh, so with this one, I'm going to write that formula out again. That's 1047.4 is equal to 4 thirds times pi times the radius to the third power. And in this method, instead of multiplying these two numbers together and then rounding that off, and, and then dividing, I'm just going to go straight to the dividing. I'm going to divide this side by 4 thirds times pi, and divide this side by 4 thirds times pi. And the benefit here is that 4 thirds divided by 4 thirds is 1, and pi divided by pi is 1, so I'm left with r to the third power all by itself. And now over here I can do 1047.4 divided by 4 thirds and divided by pi. But you have to be careful how you enter this. You either have to do 1047.4 divided by 4 thirds and then divided by pi, or you have to group these together with parentheses. So order of operations then will multiply these together first to get a number before dividing it into 1000. 47.4. That's the method I'm going to use here. I'm going to do 1047.4 divided by, and I'm going to put parentheses around the 4 thirds times pi. So I'll use the parentheses key, 4 divided by 3 times pi, close the parentheses, equals, and it looks like I'm going to get here 250.04, which I'll round to the nearest hundredth. But notice this is a little bit different than we had before. 250 point to the nearest hundredth, we'll say 0, 0,5. Not a lot different, but it is a little bit different than what we had before. But now, I'm, I know this is equal to r to the third power, so if I take the cube root of both sides, I'll get r by itself over here, and the cube root of 250.05 should get me a number that's still also about 6.3, but if I do the cube root 3, the cube root of 250.05, and that is equal to still 6.3. To the nearest tenth, r is equal to 6.3 meters. So two, not, not so much different, but two different ways of calculating the radius of a sphere when you are given its volume. Uh, be careful with the cube root part. Uh, that's the one of the tricky parts of this problem. So good luck and I hope this helps when you're dealing with spheres.